Rise up. Rise up. So, Dr. Julius Gavi, thank you so much for granting us an interview for Black Exit. Uh, yes, Black, Black Set. Black Set. Yes. yes, thank you, and uh, also for Web Nation Africa. Okay. Yes, so. My pleasure. Yes, thank you. We are happy to have you. Now, um, people who are watching, uh, for me, I was privileged to learn a little bit of history. You know, but I have a lot of young demographics watching. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. might not have heard of you. Can you please briefly introduce yourself, who you are, um, your upbringing, and your parents? <laughs> well, I don't think I'm that important. Um, I'm a retired cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon. But that means uh, I operate on, on the heart and blood vessels throughout the body, mm. as well as the organs in the chest. Mm. So that's what I did until just before COVID, I retired. So wow. I'm sort of taking it easy at the present time. But um, I think my only importance is that I'm Marcus Garvey's yeah. son, Marcus and Amy Garvey. And um, of course, Marcus Garvey was a major Pan-Africanist of the first half of the 20th century. And he was the forerunner of people like Kwame Nkrumah and um, Joma Kenyatta, many of the, mm -hmm. the African nationalists who went on to liberate their, mm -hmm. their countries. Nandi Ezekiwe of Nigeria and, and, and so on, and Malawi, all of those places. Even Nelson Mandela and so on was influenced by Marcus Garvey. So he made a great impact in the Caribbean, in the United States and in Africa in terms of uh, his mobilizing people and creating, you might say, black consciousness. Uh, Steve Biko in mm -hmm. South Africa was like one of his disciples, mm -hmm. Kwame Ture out of yes. Trinidad. Um, an understanding of who we are as a people who were dehumanized by slavery and the apartheid systems after that. So he, he um, resurrected ourselves as a nation. Mm -hmm in terms of knowing our, our history, our traditions, and our culture. He brought that to the fore, and he taught it to, you know, millions of people. Um, his main organs were a newspaper called The Negro World, which, which had the greatest circulation of any black uh, weekly at that time. And of course, he traveled, you know, all over. Yes. His main base was in the United States mm -hmm. for several years. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, he mobilized millions of people worldwide mm -hmm. to an understanding of who we were so we could reconnect with our past and, as he said, you know, redeem ourselves as African peoples. So I'm very, very pleased and proud to, to, to have had, you know, him as my father and um, his ideology as something that inspired me in terms of my own life. I like that. Now, you know, I want to get to see how it is like to be um, your upbringing in, in the home of uh, Marcus Garvey. How mm -hmm. was it like as a child? Mm -hmm. What was he teaching you? What was it? What was it like to be? No, well, my mother is the one that raised me because um, the last time I saw him, um, I was five years old. I was in England. We had moved from Jamaica to England um, uh, because um, uh, he needed to be there, sort of at the center of empire, mm -hmm. uh, to carry on his worldwide business. And um, we moved back to Jamaica um, at that time. Um, like I said, when I was five years old, and then he died two years later, mm. in 1937. Um, so my memories of him are, you know, those of a child in terms of, you know, a presence. But my mother raised me um, in terms of an understanding of who he was, because she was um, the other half of, of, of the Garveyism, yes. if you will, yes. because she was his match in terms of being a Pan-Africanist because she, she had put together his speeches and so on, because he had been imprisoned in the United States because of his activities. Yes. And, um, uh, you know, the FBI um, 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 hounded him, if you will, J. Edgar Hoover, and criminalized him in terms of false charges. He spent three years in jail. So my mother really, you know, um, picked up a lot of um, the slack, so to speak, in terms of leadership within the organization. and. Um, and raising us, meaning my older brother and myself. Mm -hmm. 
So she did that back in Jamaica, and um, she was very instrumental in teaching me and, and my brother exactly, you know, who my father was, uh, what the mission was in terms of, um, uh, as he called it, the redemption of Africa. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, you know, Africa was completely colonized, mm -hmm. and uh, so was the Caribbean completely colonized. So he was an anti-colonial, you know, champion, uh, as well as a pan-Africanist in that sense. So I grew up with that understanding and with all the, the details, shall we say, of the organization and the, the difficulties, the triumphs and so on. Um, so I got a full education from my mother. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you're really keen on and want to do is to exonerate his name ah, yes. as the FBI and then uh, other agencies sabotaged his movement. Um, I want you to share light on, on, on why you really want this to happen, to exonerate his name. Uh, well, basically, you know, what, um, you know, particularly white America does is, is to criminalize African people. And, and if you look at the, the injustice system within the United States, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, 40% um, of the people incarcerated mm -hmm. are African Americans. And yet still, African Americans only make up 14 or 15% of the that's population. That's so, so the system itself criminalizes, you know, African people. Mm -hmm. they, they have done that with my dad. They, they, they did that with, with Ma Malcolm, X, Malcolm X, who they went, went on to assassinate. They, they did that with Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. They tried to find something on him, peeping through keyholes, etc. which they did to my dad. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, my mother was a secretary and she traveled, you know, with him, but, you know, obviously not, not with him in, in that sense, uh, in a room or anything, but there are always peeping through keyholes to try to find something, you know, derogatory, but they couldn't find anything. They tried to get him on tax evasion, they couldn't find anything, and they had trumped up charges with an empty envelope and with people who lied, the prosecuting attorney uh, uh, lied and he coached the witnesses to lie. So, um, you know, it's, it's a stain on his name. He's a, he's a major um, um, uh, uh, pan-Africanist and champion of African people. And um, uh, his, name, his name shall be cleared mm -hmm. uh, be, be, because we'll not allow white supremacy to reign. You know, it's, it's time of reigning is over. And if they don't recognize it, that's their problem. Mm -hmm. So we will continue the fight. We started with Obama and, and we um, made a pres rep representation to Obama. And, and we're doing the same thing with Biden. But, um, you know, we're trying to mobilize the, the whole African world, shall we say, because he's a champion for the whole African world. And if white people, Americans, Europeans, want to relate to black people, they have to respect us. Mm -hmm. And they have to show respect to my father. That's yes. how I see it. Yes. Uh, if you don't respect me, then I don't need to discuss anything with you. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're 1.5 billion people. Mm -hmm. And if we're not respected, mm -hmm. then we, we, we'll work with those people who respect, respect us. us. And, uh, you know, we've been on this road since 1987, mm -hmm. which was the centennial of my father's birth. Um, we, we've gone to the Congress of the United States. Um, House resolutions, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. Right now, in the Congress of the United States, there's a House resolution to exonerate my dad. So all of these things are happening, and you know we're doing what we can do. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that we will not rest, and Africa should not rest, rest. until you know there is justice. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with reparations. Mm -hmm. There has to be reparative justice. Yes. Otherwise, why do we need to deal with people who who have kidnapped us? you know, uh, killed and, and moved, mo you know, more than uh, 30 billion people mm -hmm. in, um, uh, out of Africa, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and really retarded the progress of Africa mm -hmm. and, and continues to rape Africa of yes. its resources. You have a message for the blacks, meaning the black existing in the, the West and Europe, Europe. Mm -hmm. what would that message be? Oh, well, keep doing it because, um, you know, the future is Africa. Africa is the richest continent in the world. You know, has 60% of the arable um, land, 40% of the gold, you know, 30 or 40% of, of the mm -hmm. oil resources. Mm -hmm. And you can go on and on with, with manganese and lithium and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So um, uh, it's also the, 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 the youngest country. So it has the greatest future. So those of us in the diaspora who, you know, understand the difficulties um, in terms of, of advancing and not only advancing, but being ourselves as African people, in Europe or in the United States, we uh, should understand that we can live a much more fulfilling life mm -hmm. here in Africa and bring, therefore, our resources, mm -hmm. uh, human resources, um, you know, physical resources, financial resources, 
bring it here to, to, to Africa, where it will bear, you know, great fruit. Mm -hmm. And um, as, as you say, we, we do have a, a lot to offer. And, you know, numerically, um, we are anywhere from 300 to 400 million. Mm -hmm. so, so between those on the continent here, in, 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 in terms of, you know, the, the, the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, we, we end up being at least a quarter mm -hmm. of the population mm -hmm. of, of the earth, mm -hmm. which is significant. Yeah. So huge. if we unite, we'll have a, a significant voice mm -hmm. because we'll be a, a quarter of the population of the world. We'll have the largest um, uh, resources mm -hmm. and in terms of any one continent. Mm -hmm. So as a geopolitical entity, mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to sit at the table with anybody and speak from strength, yeah. you know, not, not begging, you know, but we'll have a place at the Security Council. Otherwise, we don't need to be at the United Nations. And uh, we, we don't need to be part of a G7. We can be part of the BRICS, uh, uh, you know, so we have to understand that, you know, that, that those people who, who over time have dehumanized us and disrespected us, there are other people, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, who, who are more likely to be our friends, at least so far they have not harmed us, whether it's the Chinese or the Russians, or you know, people in Latin America and so on. We need we need them to work with those who will treat us, you know, appropriately, you know, uh, um, and 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 in a friendly, uh, shall we say, uh, fashion, business-wise, etc. Um, and this is a critical point because if we don't do it at this point, then then Africa, I think, will be recolonized again yeah. because again, all the resources are here and people are scrambling for resources mm -hmm. in terms of the next stage of, of industrial development. Um, as, as you know, everything is going green, et cetera, et cetera. Lithium, hydrogen, all of these things are needed to go to the next uh, step in terms of uh, uh, industrialization, but w with a minimal carb carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, Africa is there in terms of you know, wind uh, uh, um, uh, resources, in terms of solar resources, in, 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 t in terms of uh, water resources, uh, et cetera, hydro, mm -hmm. hydro, hydroelectric power. So we, we have so much yes. and, and um, we need to harness it. First. Now I want you to send, this is a special request from Black Set, which is a YouTube channel. Um, she's been supporting the movement of your, uh, the exoneration of your father. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wants you to send a message to Black Set Home Commerce. Well, and you know, you're, you're, you're doing the right thing. And um, you know, be respectful of the people on, of the, on the continent. Be respectful of, of the continent itself. Mm -hmm meaning mother nature, uh, mm -hmm. don't come here mm -hmm. simply looking to become a millionaire or whatever it is and bringing that same ideology uh, of the people who, who, who have dominated Africa and have dominated you. Uh, come with an open mind and an African ideology uh, to work with Africans, you know, for the development of Africa and for the development and prosperity of African people. And, and then you have to fit in because, you know, you, you have to in some sense learn the culture. You may mm -hmm. have to learn a language that you didn't yeah. know before. Mm -hmm. You have to learn certain customs that you didn't learn before. But that's, that's only the superficial aspect of what it is to be an African. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I, I can uh, converse with you in any language, but beyond the language, um, we, we communicate at a different level, mm -hmm. at a spiritual level, at a level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, we know we're brothers. Yes. Uh, you know, yes. I, 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 I don't have to say anything to you. I can look at you and, I, and you know, you know, I know that you're my brother and you know that I'm your brother. And then I treat you that way, irrespective of whether we speak the same language or not. So, so it, you know, um, being an African is a very spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we have to, to live in a spiritual way in, in order to really um, uh, integrate with Africa and in order to really develop Africa. We cannot do it in the way the European has done it because he sees Mother Nature only as a commodity. Uh, to be used and discarded, mm -hmm. and people in the same way, to be used and discarded. People are not a means to an end. People are the end, the end of the evolutionary mm -hmm. process, the end of the creative process of the, of the divinity. Mm -hmm. So we have to treat people like that, you know. The whole world is a sacred place, mm -hmm. and, and, and we have to live in that way. We don't need to go to church. We just, you know, the way of life that we, we live should be a sacred way of life, where like we that. respect each other and respect Mother Nature. I like that. Now, thank you, and thank you so much for everything you do and uh, for educating us. I really appreciate this. And being on the show, being on Web Nation Africa, and also being on Black Set. Thank you so much. My pleasure.
one nation, one Africa. Thank you, Blacksit family. Please keep watching and remember, follow your dreams. Purchase your tracks today. Emperor made this.